connecting. Yeah, we have some internet problems oh. today. We'll okay. do our best but we'll see. Okay. And today I try to put this very close to you. So okay. You okay, sure. Hotspot doesn't work? Yeah, I'm using my hotspot. I do have a hotspot. No, we have one. Huh? Have one. Okay, I have plenty of GB. Oh, I have one. Huh? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, I think today we don't need to do the prayers. Two, two reasons why we don't need to do the uh, refuge, because already, including myself, we all took Bodhicitta vow from His Holiness. And then today we had a, such a great opportunity to receive this precious vow from Bodhisattva himself. And... Uh, okay. And then we need to uh, cover up all the textbook today. Osaji, British Jimmy Dodam, Jerab, the Jin in the Indian body, Sanjay Shin, the Miki Pibayan, Drogo, Namda Shin, and Jobra, Show, Yedamanguru, and Amandola. Yanda, me. Quickly, just as a reminder that what His Holiness. Uh, stressed out of that. <clears throat> what he's uh, taught this morning. Immediately when he started the teaching, he's quoted one of the, I think, sutra, uh, saying that the Buddha just putting hands on your head or just having a, a, a holy water and having a bath will not uh, eliminate your uh, uh, non-virtues. Non non -virtues. So now, then he just connect to, uh, in order to get rid of this uh, negative karmas, negative karmas, uh, the original or the, yeah, the or karma the, that is the origin of the original the member sobala no man we can jump ever so good is and in chess and going and you know we can jump ever so bella and in your mom it's our things in the dance in the house we gave a logic yeah and in the member so good to be and it's on your gym then the chunny temper to be troubled your sister of the song was so she's saying that as Holmes said this morning, uh, it is the origin of suffering, which has two aspects, karma and afflictions. And karma has its origin in the afflictions. So karma arises from the afflictions. And the afflictions, in turn, they arise from self-grasping. And now to overcome self-grasping, we need a mind that is the opposite from the point of view of the object that it perceives. It has to be the opposite of the object of the self-grasping mind. So such a mind, which in terms of its object is opposed to the object of the self-grasping mind, that can eliminate self-grasping and thereby the other afflictions and karma. And so in that way, it says in the last line of the sutra quote, this is how the Buddha therefore teaches suchness in order to be liberated. Then after that, His Holiness came back with the saying, uh, I don't feel 
kind of anger towards Chinese anymore. <laughs> and then uh, he said, uh, because why no anger? One reason, seeing the emptiness. Secondly, thinking that the, the hatred, the anger, or the mistaken mind, all the under the sway of the so much kind of a grasping towards himself and herself. So, and then he, it's very easy to forgive. That's what he mentioned this morning. So this is a great uh, message for all of us. Uh, and then he said, the Bodhicitta, teaching of the Bodhicitta is the last kind of a, uh, what we call it, hmm, uh, teaching uh, by the Buddha himself when before passing away. So uh, normally I didn't hear very directly like this. This morning he said it. So she says, uh, His Holiness said that um, that the, the last teachings the Buddha gave were the teachings on bodhicitta. Yeah, and also he said, if you practice this well, then uh, close to my heart like the, then the meaning of to meet me the meaning of meeting me in this life is uh, oh, so it's, oh, it's meaningful um, us meeting in this life becomes meaningful oh this he said this it's heavy mm. so powerful Normally we meet his holiness and I take a picture and that's like, oh, mm -hmm. that's it. And show off a little bit. <laughs> but his holiness, now if you have the picture of his holiness and you and with his holiness, and then the best reminder is this one, I think, what he said this morning. So now let's get back to the entering to the middle way. <laughs> Hmm. Was that seventh? No, it's a on the still. We are on the sixth. <laughs> you moved very quickly. <laughs> Wait for us. Oh, <laughs> dirishata. Uh, mata yon du zambeta. Simji to be na lola kesanta. Mandi uh and 
tempo nigue na mchat se voce en tempo chique na mchat se en e tenche de ha coia de corvala chubata dog ver na batizo se voce se coala judo na batizo se onde ane rangshin ki ane conjo som na taba de cheme tangpe ane taba tian pet tempo yo de nichi den de chumba ina ane one tane asan de brocho Antaran and Ranzugi, Jamjo Tomba Shubert, it was all Chanjus and Tomba Shubert Nashi. And it seems in Tam Jagut and I signed Jay, said Lord Betras, Jig, Landuchi was on my imba. Munet and Sim Dingne, Tassan, my dinner, Sim Jing the Twenty years yet. You hear me in Jerisha, some some jig, what is lesser. Now, with regard to what His Holiness explains, with regard to um, emptiness in particular, now it's important, therefore, to generate a mind, the object of which is in direct opposition to our root ignorance. Only with such a mind are we able to counteract uh, this, this uh, root of all afflictions. And for that, in order to generate such a mind that serves as such an antidote, we first need to recognize the object of negation, the object of negation of emptiness. What is it we need to negate in order to realize how phenomena actually exist? Now, to be able to identify the object of negation properly, it is necessary first to gain an understanding of what are called the true truth, conventional truth and ultimate truth. And that then, um, opens us to the possibility of enlightenment, that reaching the state of a Buddha is possible. But again, it's important for us to understand what does it mean to be a Buddha? What are the qualities of a Buddha on a conventional and ultimate level? What are the qualities that a Buddha possesses? And all this is explained by the great Nalanda master. So His Holiness the Dalai Lama uh, actually composed a praise to 17 of these Nalanda masters who set forth these necessary, these teachings that we uh, need to uh, receive or these teachings that are necessary for our understanding. And based on what the Nalanda masters teach, we get an understanding of the basis, the basis of phenomena. What is the basis of everything? And then on the basis of that, you have then the, the teachings on the true truth, the teachings on the Four Noble Truth, and so forth. So the teachings of the Four Noble Truth they um, indicate what is it we need to avoid in order, or what, in what way are we born in samsara? What is the process of being caught in samsara? And what is the process of freeing ourselves from samsara? And once we reach that kind of understanding, once we gain that understanding, we generate faith uh, in, in the three jewels. We, we generate this um, stable type of faith um, devotion in the three jewels and at the same time also we need to generate the mind of enlightenment we need to generate bodhicitta the aspiration to become fully enlightened for the benefit of all sentient beings na so ta che zanga dinema ta jidane ta ga ju 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 yo mare la nye ge shira she shin ka mare ta ina yin dinan no ni ke chi shu ji ge jerm she ge Mm Peje kol to tosko ani chazanji ha mo konye zo kanye kare yor situ ani tobe takzam seji keje ko a che tamje tobe takzam re situ tambe ani tobe kare so so ibe sonrochi ani dine ji ge cho yo mare ta tobe takzam ro ba sin sonro dine ji yungu yor ki yon dine ji yungu yor che zanga ta di nye gi gen gi ni maji peje tri de kabliya en gen gi se bu shibu sonje Around 
Tata Tata Senior so, of course, Rinpoche doesn't have that much time to explain you everything in detail, but one thing that is stressed a lot by Lama Tsongkhapa is the necessity of identifying the object of negation, the object of negation when you realize emptiness. And here, of course, it's from the point of view of the um, mind, uh, uh, from the point of view of the middle way uh, consequentialist school or the Madhyamika Prasangika school, the highest of the different philosophical systems or Buddhist systems. Now, when you identify the object of negation according to this particular philosophical system, it's important to understand what is this self-grasping mind? What is this mind that grasps at true existence, at inherent existence, at a kind of unrealistic existence. And how do phenomena exist in actuality, the way it is explained, as being merely posited by a conceptual mind, being merely labeled by conceptual minds, by our thoughts, being merely labeled by our thoughts. So when we hear that phenomena are merely designated by our own thoughts, um, it's difficult to understand. And we may misunderstand, we may misunderstand that explanation when it's, said, when, it, when it's explained that everything is just imputed by our thoughts. We may come to the wrong conclusion that we create everything. Our mind creates everything. Everything has been created, has been made by our own mind. But this is not what is meant with phenomena being merely labeled. And one day Rinpoche's teacher clearly explained this point on the basis of knowing that it can be misunderstood, this particular point of designation that we feel everything was be created by our own thoughts. And the example is that of a, uh, of a rope, of a speckled rope that is coiled, it's coiled together, <coughs> like in a coiled fashion, it's speckled, and in a dark room, and this rope then appears, because of its color and its, its, the way it, it lies there, it appears to be a snake. That is the example usually given to um, indicate that phenomena are merely designated. So actually, with regard to this rope that appears to be a snake, well, we believe, due to our initial mistake, we think there's an actual snake. There's a thought, oh, there's a snake. Our mind designates snake on this rope. And on the basis of designating snake, on the basis of this rope, uh, fear arises, 
uh, aversion arises, attachment arises, so different negative states of mind arise. And then when we well, switch on the light or we look closer, we, we move closer towards the object, we realize there is actually no snake. There is no snake. Um, it's actually just a rope. Now, this example is used to uh, show in terms of, well, it's in terms of identifying the object of negation. So to understand, it seemed that from the side of that rope, from the side of this object, there was an actual snake. There seems to be an actual snake. So we labeled snake on the object, but believes there's an actual snake over there. And in a similar way, <coughs> so in a similar way, just as we believe that there's an actual snake, like, likewise with regard to phenomena, with, with, the, with the conventionally existent phenomena, well, there's the sense that there's over there an actual object, an actual object existing from its own side, that it has not been labeled by our own, own mind. But Rinpoche says this is not saying that there's nothing. It's not saying that there isn't anything. Yes, of course, there are things, but they don't exist exactly in the way they appear to us. So just as the snake doesn't exist from the side of the rope when it's uh, mistakenly designated, likewise, any kind of phenomenon, when it is designated, it does not exist as that designated object from the side of the object. It depends on our designating mind. Mm. So, uh, but it's not saying there's nothing. Of course, there's the rope. In the case of the snake, on the basis of the rope, the snake is designated. Right? Uh, uh, so now this what does, uh, how does you, uh, to use this meditation? Then uh, when I think the time, timing of the Lama Tsongkhapa, when uh, as yesterday I mentioned that Manjushri uh, advised Lama Tsongkhapa to go into a retreat. Then at the retreat time, mostly what he's meditating on is like a, uh Chesangat Tiny Sajakujo so now with regard to the eye we, which, we, um, which we observe, the eye which we perceive, or the self that we perceive, well, actually, the conventional eye, the eye that does exist, is just designated on the basis of any of our aggregates. So on the basis of our hands, on our feet, on our legs, and so forth, we label I. On any kind of part of ourselves, we label I. And the I exists nominally. It exists conventionally. However, from the perspective, from the vantage point of the self-grasping mind, the mind that perceives true or inherent existence, that kind of ignorance, from that vantage, from that, mind, from that mind's perspective, it seems 
it's not just coming from the mind. It just doesn't seem as if our mind has just designated the person, but it's actually a self in and of itself. Independent of our thoughts, it has always been that. So it is just from itself, objectively, that kind of self. This is how it appears. And therefore, since this is how ourselves, how the self and other phenomena appear in that kind of exaggerated way, we need to observe this quietly. We need to observe this mistaken mind and, and check how does the self, for instance, appear to that mistaken mind. So it's like when you know there's a thief in the house and you want to catch the house, you quietly move in a, in a dark corner and wait for the thief to arrive to be able to, to, to catch him, catch him, him or her. So similarly, we need to do something similar here. We need to become aware of our own misperception. How does it operate? So Ketubje, who was one of the disciples of Lama Tsongkhapa, when he, he received teachings from Lama Tsongkhapa, and on the basis of that, he composed his own notes on emptiness. And in there, he describes um, this kind of procedure, saying, we need to wait until the self, this unrealistic self, clearly appears to the mind. And then become aware of how does it innately appear? How does that innate, this naturally instinctive sense of the eye, that we need to observe. How does the eye appear? To know what is it we need to negate. What is it we are mistaken about and therefore what is it we need to negate? Oh, no, sure. So if we can meditate like this, and then once you can feel that in, you can say innate, innate. innate eye, that innate eye, so you, you can just catch or this, you can see how this, uh, you preserve it, preserve it, perceive, perceive, perceive it. And then, in it, I don't know, the so the innate eye grasping mind, the innate self grasping mind. Innate said, so if we could uh, uh, check like this, and then you will really know uh, the, how to, the question will come, how to, uh, the, to eliminate, to eliminate, uh, to eliminate this uh, eye. So, uh, today, today is the the, uh, the Buddhist calendar, especially Tibetan Buddhist calendar, uh, we start the fifteenth uh, full moon, right? Is it full moon? Mm -hmm. Full moon, right? Full moon. Uh, we believe that uh, this morning, uh, around maybe four, four, four or five, uh, the Buddha showed the morning. Now, almost 3,000 or 2,500 years ago, he got fully enlightened. So, actually, the, for maybe six uh, years meditating to, to catch this, he doesn't have a CCTV. <laughs> 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 but this, but this, this uh, inner thief, uh, we cannot get in in uh, in the camera. How the technology <laughs> improved? <laughs> that so Buddha seeing this, and then he came up with a solution or to how to eliminate this, and especially now uh, uh, Lama Tsongkhapa, but he will. Explain uh, the uh, mm, 
refuting or negating the self. Negating the uh, self. self. At that point, Dhamma uh, will explain how Buddha did it, how we should do it. So looks like we would not reach that. <laughs> so anyway, the main thing is uh, keep this in your mind because uh, because in uh, in a Tibetan school, uh, Tibetan Buddhist school, we have uh, four traditions. So they each and uh, they have a different way of explanation on this. So uh, here Lama Tsongkhapa will explain uh, kind of like, uh, now I need any less help. Uh Chadam Mosum Kayak. The young Dungzin Dung Dungzing is somebody law Kasuri Ranga Tuba, say Sodochi, or Ranga Tuba Sutus, and could count the two megi Ramavig, somebody to your dinage. D. De Marie, chill turn a young go your race, chill turn a young go race, get at the sevo, ya would have cobala, and Koranging when you marry, say, Dingen, the Tembo, Chen, Sevoya, Hakoya, Chetu, and the German Chig, Gulli, Mixagunche, and El Havado, Chig, Gulu, Temba, said, and Mixagi, go to Yong Goyadi, and then got the Lizgala, Chatig Dua. Chesanga, cousin Tanda, Gishi Tojitum de Lagata, Loma Bukuli, Junchi, Luduma was de. Jarney, ตูคดูดูจิลอบินะตงบะนี้สงบะเตตะเปยามเชมบะเรยะกอดะเรสอินะตะตินจุงสงบะเดลละตะเปยจวนเนเปยตะเปยฮันทอรยะตะดินเด
deal more directly with the nature of a phenomenon, the nature of that entity. Why can it not exist the way, in the way in which it appears and so forth. So anyway, the point is that to this innate self-grasping mind, it seems that its object, the way the object appears, it seems as if the object had some kind of uh, self-sufficient um, mode of existence, as if it could exist without having to depend, to, to, to depend on anything else. It could just exist in and of itself. But in actuality, it depends on other phenomena. It doesn't exist independently. It doesn't exist from its own side. It doesn't exist objectively, but in dependence on other phenomena. And Lama Tsongkhapa has worked very hard to illustrate that, to illustrate this uh, in his different writings. And as you may remember, Geshe Dorje Damdu, Geshe La talked about him before, so Geshe Dorje Damdu, who's worked so hard um, to put together this study program, and he's taught for many years, and just recently, him and his uh, disciples had uh, an audience with His Holiness and had requested His Holiness to teach Lama Tsongkhapa's text, The Three Principal Aspects of the Path. But instead of teaching this text, His Holiness said, I'd rather teach you praise to dependent arising. So here is Holiness again, with this stress, the importance of dependent arising. And Lama Tsongkhapa, when he praised dependent arising, he did speak in this text. He did speak about emptiness, how amazing emptiness was, and so forth. But even more amazing than emptiness, he said, was dependent on arising. That there's no one as, uh, who was as great as the Buddha in the sense of having taught dependent origination or dependent arising. And the Lama Tsongkhapa himself saying that he has heard this, has, that he has heard about, that he has received these teachings with his own coarse mind on dependent arising. He considers himself to be very fortunate. Mm -hmm. uh, if Buddha only speaks about uh, the emptiness, and then it will uh, uh, it will give you uh, power to uh, to kind of uh, eliminate the grasping, and then what? Right? So the question becomes, it is so beautiful, oh, nothing is coming. No more grasping. So beautiful. <coughs> Maybe we won't appreciate like this. And then we need to eat, drink, sleep. We need to be a normal, back to normal. <laughs> so, and what emptiness why Lama Tsongkhapa say it like this, could be like this. After taking out the old building and build something new, much more beautiful. So then we will appreciate, or we won't complain like I have to uh, bring out my old house. We won't complain like that. With the happiness, we will bring it out and then uh, build a new house, isn't it? Similarly, like in uh, the Heart Sutra says, uh, emptiness, uh, form is emptiness, right? Form is emptiness. Then Buddha doesn't have uh, something to say, he would stop there. But he didn't stop there. He said, emptiness is form. And we can debate <laughs> emptiness is form or not, but it doesn't work like this. It means, that there is a one reason why saying emptiness is home. There we can kind of dig inside and can understand about dependent origination. And Lama Tsongkhapa said in there, as emptiness, as emptiness can uh, eliminate the grasping, also the Dependent origination, understanding of the dependent origination has a power to eliminate the grasping too. That is interesting. Uh, 
in Lama Tsongkhapa's text, in uh, one of the, uh, the commentary of the fundamental uh, wisdom uh, of Nagarjuna, here Lama Tsongkhapa's commentary, in there it say, he says, hmm, uh, uh, Tongba ギャワメバ。あね、トンバイン、トンバイン山子天中陽中で、天中陽山子トンバレ、せげ、サムロティ、ペン、ソソセムナロ、テンポ、やぼじ、ソトベイナ。あん、テディ、オネタネ、ジ
So, actually, in the text, uh, well, Chanda Kheti's text and Lama Tsongkhapa's text, so as Rinpoche mentioned earlier, you have the diamond sliver reasoning, and as part of that, um, Chanda Kheti negates that phenomena exist or arise from something that is inherently different. And then after that has been negated, then he sets forth the true truth, the conventional and the ultimate truth. So he presents the true truth. And here, of course, from the point of view of the highest philosophical school, the uh, consequentialist middle way school. And they have a special way, they have a particular way, a special way in which way they set forth the true truth. And also from the point of view of what is being negated, what is it that we negate in order to understand the ultimate truth? Now here there's a difference between the two middle way schools. Rimshi mentioned this before. You have the two middle way schools. The highest, which is the Prasangika school, or the, sorry, the consequentialist school, and the slightly lower school, which is the autonomous school, or the autonomy school. Of those two, the autonom autonomists, they also set forth an object of negation. They say, if you want to realize emptiness, you need to negate something. What is it you negate? You negate that phenomena exist inherently without appearing to a correct mind. So they, okay, they say, so she said to me, you explain this. <laughs> I mean, you, you just translate that because it's not explain, but translate because it's really difficult to say in Tibetan as well as in English. So in the autonomy school, they don't say that phenomena exist. They say that phenomena exist inherently, but they say phenomena do not ex exist inherently without appearing to a correct mind. So in other words, everything has to appear to a correct mind in order to exist. Although phenomena exist inherently, 
They exist from their own sight, they would say, but not without appearing to a mind that is correct, a mind that is that is that, that the, the main object of which uh, exists. Okay, that is their view. The consequentialists say, no, you don't have to say this, you don't have to say that. That is not, according to us, that is not the object of negation of emptiness. In order to realize emptiness, that's not what you need to negate. You need to negate that phenomena exist inherently, that they exist from their own side, that they exist objectively, that they exist somehow among their parts. So when you take an object with all its parts, the sense that there's the object that owns these parts is over there and just exists in and of itself without depending on anything else. That you have to negate. That is the, the, the consequentialist school, uh, school's view on what needs to be negated. So just uh, not appearing to a mind is not enough. Okay, The negation to a correct mind, not appearing to a correct mind, that kind of um, um, existing inherently, but not inherently, but not existing inherently without appearing to a correct mind, that is not the object of negation. Anyway, in that context, having established that there are these two schools and that there's a difference in terms of their object of negation, then the question that arises is, unless we realize emptiness directly, unless there's a mind that is absorbed in emptiness directly, are all the other minds mistaken? Are all the other minds the other minds that arise once we, we arise from that meditative absorption, are they mistaken? And the answer is yes. Mistaken in the sense, mistaken just from the point of view of appearance. What appears to them is inherent existence, is true and inherent existence. So from that point of view, just from the point of view of the appearance, they are mistaken. And this is a unique view from the highest school, that they say, other than the mind realizing emptiness directly, all minds are mistaken with regard to their appearance. And so, um, His Holiness the Dalai Lama oftentimes gives a quote, often gives a quote from Ayadeva, Ayadeva, uh, who is a disciple of Nagarjuna. He recited this text, the 400 verses. And in there he says, just as our sense perception pervades the entire body, our sense perception pervades the entire body, and there, our body, sorry, not our sense perception, our perception of the body, the sense, the physical sense perception. Our physical sense perception pervades the entire body, and thereby also pervades our uh, eye sense perception, nose sense perception, and so forth. So in other words, wherever you have the other senses, eye, ear, nose, and tongue, you also have the physical perception, the physical sense perception. Okay. And so in the same way, um, the misperception of reality pervades all other afflictive emotions, pervades all other minds. So that's the analogy given in that text. So with this quote, Bhimbuchi is indicating that all our minds are mistaken from the point of view of having this mistaken appearance of true existence. That's the name. Uh Je Sem 
Now, with regard to Chandakirti's text, so when we talk about Chandakirti's text, entry into the middle way, in there he explains very extensively that phenomena are just designated, merely designated by the mind. They're only designated by our thoughts. So the way that takes place is explained there, explained in Chandakirti's text in a really unique way. And actually, Chandakirti composed two commentaries on Nagarjuna's fundamental wisdom. One is called uh, Entry into the Middle Way, and another one is called Clear Words. Now, in this text, Clear Words, he says, if you want to know about how phenomena are merely designated, if you want to know this mode of designation or how phenomena are designated, you should look at uh, the, the entry into the middle way. You, you should study this or you should uh, read this particular text. And then in the uh, entry into the middle way, he talks about it on different occasions. So w in the context of the true truth, for instance, he describes that phenomena really designated. Then there's also a section in this text that deals with the mind-only school. And in there, he also explains that phenomena are merely designated. And towards the end of the text, he describes um, a chariot. He describes a chariot and explains uh, why the chariot doesn't exist in and of itself and explains how it is merely labeled. So again, in the context of this chariot, he explains that phenomena are merely labeled or merely designated. Mm. Tanda di Pesin di Nico di Ma Church, you agree. Then I'm done any Tonga G. Sons, Savi Shul, Tinjung, Son Dutzenbe, any Melon Pejach. Yeah, did be near Bushi, did six and a lay, Savi Shibu to Gure, and did not lay your. Just on a melon with Pelly Banja on Dutzenbe, any Ranzogi, Chick Tonga Shivan and Luke Stay on Dutzenbe, any Tang Ranzo. Di Dalla Changchuba, di Shewore, near Tongbat Sinibri, Pigan, Shard, Devadi, Tuberis, and Sosolo, Yerba. They induce and be di Shewan and do Stag and do Zambe, Shewan and Sunyanji Tong. Then they go Sunyan di and they begin to Yedin Yes on the Richard Tong. That Dilang and Jogi and then Jogi Na said, Benja Shayoshi, Pigging and Nan Sunyan do Sharonetti. Chesangata. Uh, Chesang, and the Tadu Zambetti Michi do some Guyena. Can't have Gina, Daddy. Read that she's not a little bit. Read that Lonina. That can't she cheat that she will be jandy. What I would do stone do some good back cramping, do some lay on the Zambi. Anzola did shamber yours. Now I did the year of Massa Dick on a shamber delay on the Zambi and Chivas. Yes, the Peja Dandy to Gane Leon Dua. No, that case you should do just on a melon. Ranzu Melon, Nandolia, Ranzu, Tombat Sini, Buggy Pig, Tomba Rede, Yenayan, Sunni, Meb, Gogumindugas, Tombat Sini, Buddy, your Marie, Dinal Sunni, Mindus Lab Gogumindugas, Sunni, Ranjal Hag, Hagu was, or this one when I change, Tomba Yenayan, Tandoyan, Tinjun, Tinjun Yinza, Chaji Tigre, say, De, little Pejani. Uncle <laughs> 
Now, in the, when we say the true truth, or when Chandakirti speaks of the true truth, um, here in particular, describing emptiness, describing that phenomena exist, independence, our risen independence on other phenomena are labeled. Well, one example that is given is that of a reflection of one's face in a mirror. So if you look at a mirror, you look into a mirror and you see your own face, um, then to that mind, you have the reflection of your face and that reflection appears to be a real face. It seems to exist in and of itself as your own face. And the Buddha, in many sutras, he talks about a child. He mentions a child not able to identify that uh, this reflection is actually not a face, or the reflection of a person is not an actual person. So she briefly kind of mentioned, well, is that an infant or a toddler? I mean, it's not, not clear uh, what kind of child does not know uh, that the reflection of a certain person is not that person. But anyway, also cats and dogs at a certain age, they also don't know that this uh, reflection is not the actual object. So the point is here, as an adult, we know, we know, or at some point uh, when we're younger, we know that this reflection of a face or the reflection of a person is just a reflection, it's not a person. But then there are those who don't know, and the appearance of that reflection as a real face appears to the mind, and they hold on to it as being true. And then there are those to whom the face appears to be an actual face, but they know it's just a mistaken appearance, and in actuality it doesn't exist as that face. So you see there's a difference, uh, being fooled by the appearance and not being fooled by the appearance. But the point being that although the, ref the reflection appears as a real face and there's a mistaken appearance, but we're not saying there's no reflection. Reflection exists, but not as a face. Uh -huh. yes. Dogi Kunti Chi Kuranjul Maji Lodge and I would do a Nila Dinia Servet. Oh, did he? Tatsik Digiti, to Shuang, Tatsik, Tatsik, and I am to let that be a doge to Shuang, let Tamuza Digiti. No, so Tatsik Chebby, no. Tawa Digi cannot, Mr. Chi. Mobotonga said, Risha. The Antant Labna, some juice of them, you know, some Today's <laughs> It's today a very special day of the, to remember Buddha. So Lama Tsongkhapa said, how to remember Buddha is, the, uh, the best way to remember Buddha is through his speech. Mm. So that's why uh, this uh, practice which Lama Tsongkhapa and uh, uh, the uh, uh, Chandakirti is the, the explanation about this reflection. So this particularly example really helped me. So this is this morning how I remembered Buddha. And then I thought it would be very good if uh, we can also hear the, from Buddha's sutra, which is quoted when I was called the sleeping and then I saw this. So I felt like this will be helpful. So I request Anila to uh, say this. <laughs> Sorry, I, I won't be able to find it immediately. <laughs> found the verse, but the sutra, there's so many quotes from the sutra. The sutra's name is so beautiful. Yeah. 
the meeting of the Father and Son Sutra. So that's very good, isn't it? <laughs> so, so some people said, uh, Siddhartha kind of banished Sirve. You uh, draw a little bit. La. Banished Sirve. Siddhartha banished. 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 Banished, Mari. Banished, Allah. Banished, Allah. Abandoned is his abandoned, family. Abandoned his family. Mm. But look at this sutra. Mm. It sounds so good. So it's kind of reunion and then a party. <laughs> and then giving the real teaching there. Actually, this is how he's repaying the kind of his, so his father. So here he says about Melon Shindu Yondala. It's like a, oh, in the clear, uh, clear uh, mirror. Uh, uh, there's not a, a truly uh, uh, existence of your face in there. But, oh, yes. Yes, yes. What? Yes. very good, please. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So here it says um, that emptiness should be presented by the analogy of reflection is found in the following from the meeting of Father and Son Sutra. Just as a reflection of a form with no intrinsic existence appears in a clear mirror, so understand phenomena such as trees. Mm. So this is the, uh, the sutra. So it's very helpful for me. So, yeah. And now we need to conclude. Okay. So, uh, I could say we have covered some some of the most important parts of uh, the entering uh, to the middle way but we are in the middle way <laughs> 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 so and then his holiness will always say uh, maybe you, the, if I look down there I just put it there at the end of the uh, uh, sixth chapter, Anila, did you? Yeah, did you? 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 Did Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Sometimes uh, the people around him, we like including myself, don't know how to ask the question. And to, uh, in, in order to ask a question, actually you really need to investigate a little bit, like a news reporter, right? Most of us, we just, some questions we ask like, I can ask whatever I want. Sometimes this is not a very good way. So we need to research and how His Holiness really teaches and what is his more emphasized. Then re relating, relating to this, ask him a question would be perfect. So for a long time he was like kind of saying, now he feel like, now I am almost there with the two wings. This uh, sixty card, this you saw on that. Then I should like a sheer or a summer. Ah, the 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 clear lodge and the. Then was. The 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 lodge is the now is the the range of the 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 Soaring ahead of other accomplished swans, with wide wings of conventional and ultimate truth spread wide, propelled by the powerful winds of virtue, the Bodhisattva would cruise to the excellent far shore, the oceanic qualities of the conquerors. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Actually, the Sven has flown away, but I didn't notice that. <laughs> so his whole name will always say this. So uh, now the main thing is to understand the true truths, and especially uh, the way the uh, Chandakirti's uh, explained about that. We should. Uh, try to meditate on this and get familiar with this. And then, um, because uh, uh, the uh, uh, Chandrakirti again and again in his text will emphasize that two truths has to be like balance. So here it says uh, with it like two wings of the, the bird. So if the a bird has a one bigger wing and one smaller wing, and I think very difficult, so no balance. So now with this two understanding of the two truths, then you can really take off. So um, there are so many practices uh, in a Buddhism. Uh, in a Tushita, you look everywhere, there are so many things. So some people get confused, and some will ask, "What should I practice?" <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so should start from here, like aeroplane. First, you need to find the ground to take off. So, with having the two wings, then you will feel like I can fly now. So destination, you can choose. Whether you want a liberation only, liberation only, or you want to become Buddha, or you want to just become, not like a Arya or nothing, but just like a very smart man. With these two wings, even you don't want to become Bodhisattva or Arya, this can really help you day-to-day -day life to to become a good person, a very smart person. And with these two, and you can help a lot. And there, you want to complain a lot. And you will know how to answer your question. Sometimes I think like, we have lots of questions in our mind. So how many times we have to go to the teacher and ask questions? Rest of life, you can ask so many questions. Even you are like a practicing for such a long time, and then still there's are questions. So now, these are the two things you really need to answer. So one day that you can, my teach, like my teacher, so when there is always a doubt, he does not need to go out and knock on a, somebody else uh, door to ask her, like particularly this what sh should I do and this is uh, so he has this answer when he explained the text in the class this is how I took him as my teacher he said my he's a very simple and humble teacher uh, it's amazing, like His Holiness says, this morning, being humble is the kind of the a ground to connect with the great beings. So my teacher really shows this, uh, but then he will never say, I'm, I know that. So two times he gave me like this uh, teaching Without, without just like having a pride and to say I have something to say. But he was so just like carried away. Anila knows my teacher. <laughs> so he just closed his eyes and he talks and then it looks like he's the only, he's talking to himself. <laughs> okay? And then he's saying like, 
if you meditate well and some meditation like emptiness and buddhicitta is a little difficult but like meditating just like a shamatha this I think I can do it like before this meditation on the merit field quite difficult now these days when uh, somebody says like a uh, mom like for me I can when I have some problem I go to Lama, and whole merit field comes in front of me. He said something and moved on. But nobody noticed that. Just me and one of my friend. And then I went to him and I felt like, wow, this is powerful. And I knocked on his door after the class and said, be my teacher. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he said, oh, no, 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 uh, he's so... Uh, and then I said, the reason why I chose him, and then he said, did I say something? Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> and the second time, uh, what was the second one? Just, uh, it's coming back. Maybe, maybe it's not to share. I forgot. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the doubts, how he gets the answer, is very special, very special. So, and like His Holiness Dalai Lama, a uh, few days ago, yeah, it was my birthday, and the next day, it was His Holiness giving teaching. And then he said, uh, if you put effort, and uh, we can develop and achieve Buddhicitta, like I achieved Buddhicitta, in emptiness. He said in a very, like, in a humble way. And he's, and I was on the teaching, and then I just looked, because I was waiting for this good news for such a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just felt like, I just wanted to look his reaction when he says that, and then he just turned a little bit and said, if I say I have a bodhicitta, it's not a lie. <laughs> 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 so it's so great. So great. So now we can say Buddhist Sattva himself uh, having this kind of pride is for us. That means in an ordinary form like us, we can become like him. If he says I'm a Buddha, then we will be like, okay. It will talk such a long time, but now he just said, like, I, I have a bodhicitta now, emptiness. So it is such a great message for the people who wanted to practice very strongly. So uh, now, in the, uh, we can just go like uh, on the uh, 11th Bumi. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, like, if we uh, pray and uh, have a motivation to become like His Holiness Dalai Lama himself, that includes everything. So, keep this in your mind, and the time to time, uh, please try to uh, have a. Mostly, I don't just like I wanted to become Buddha. I don't. Want, I wanted to become Buddhicitta. My main focus will be like. How does this self-grasping harms me? This is the first way to ask myself. And how does this self-cherishing really becomes an obstacle to help the sentient beings? So these are the two things I'm trying to understand. Sometimes it's much better than just thinking like, I wanted to become Buddha. I wanted to become like a, a... uh, our heart. No more learning. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Now today we will uh, conclude here, uh, and I thank uh, Tushita uh, for giving me this opportunity and the timing. Oh, it's almost on the time. So. <laughs> and uh, 
Thank you, Gishima, uh, for uh, translating uh, for me. And uh, uh, it is uh, to have uh, a learned, uh, well learned, uh, and uh, one of the uh, best students of the IBD here with me is an uh, honor. And also, she's a great teacher. So I'm giving you a hint here, OK? So that means uh, there are so many things I left out. And then I say, this is really important. This is really important. So that means you can ask somebody. Uh, just <laughs> 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 so thank you, Anila. Uh, and uh, thank you for all. Uh, I know this uh, sometimes going through so many new things. Uh, it's a little bit boring for you. But um, we are here to, to, uh, to, to find a new life, actually, and to find an answer to the suffering. That's why we are here. It's a great meeting, actually. People gather to make <laughs> Kind of like they are not meeting for to make a trouble, <laughs> but it's somehow it turns like this. But for for us, our motivation is so good, and uh, uh, we uh, the teachers' motivation is so uh, so good. Like me, my motivation no doubt very good, but just teaching skills and my knowledge depends on my knowledge, and then. Our great master said, uh, how educated you are, that doesn't much matter. But more compassion you have, more pure, genuine uh, motivation to help, that counts. So, <laughs> so I can say, kind of I did a great job today. <laughs> okay. So... Uh, yeah, thank you all for your patience and uh, your uh, uh, attention towards this. Thank you very much. And uh, and uh, I just wanted to uh, remind you that uh, Tushita is a great place uh, uh, for me because actually Tushita, I think it's the old Gomba uh, in the 90s. I gave my first teaching. Uh, and then uh, there is a gish uh, the one Gishila, oh, I forgot his name. Uh, he is, I think, uh, a relative to uh, uh, Lama Yishi. Gishit Sering. Gishit Sering? Mm. Gishit Sering, right? Gishit Sering, yeah, Gishit Sering. He requested me to give uh, a transmission of Guru Puja. And then, I was so nervous. I think there's 40, 50 people and all looking like this. I'm so young. I'm probably, I'm 13, not 13, like 11, 11 years old. <laughs> and then I have a book. I don't need to speak like this. I have a book. I cannot see it. <laughs> the lines are mixed and shaking. <laughs> uh, I had this. <laughs> So uh, Tushi, they're very kind to me. And then all this credit actually goes to uh, His Holiness, of course. And then Lama Subhar uh, Recently, uh, we kind of uh, lost him. Uh, actually, it is uh, uh, difficult to say because the great masters, they come with a great motivation, with the prayers, not like the ignorance mind. So they come through the prayer, wherever they're needed, I'm needed, may I be there. So that means when he comes through the compassion, then he dissolves into the compassion. That means now he might be show, have to show this kind of a impermanence and then to come back again. So uh, please uh, 
when we do the dedication, so we don't need to say it now today. So the dedication, you know the difference between dedication and the prayer? This is a little bit important. Uh, prayer is something like you can like say, yeah, may all sentient beings be uh, happy. May I never get a suffering. You can pray anything like this. Dedication is something like, oh, I have kind of collected this uh, merit. I have it, uh, created, created, accumulated. accumulated this merit. So now I dedicate this to, to for this reason. So uh, we have for past three days. Uh, actually, this is the part of the celebration of uh, the the golden jubilee, <laughs> Tushita. So fifty years, wonderful. Many many people got a, uh, they change, they become a new person, um, more compassion. Maybe Tushita needs someone like on the list, these people become very good, very good. <laughs> so there would be so many people uh, that Tushita helped. So it is uh, uh, amazing. So now dedication should be more like uh, you all have this accumulated marriage past three days. We talked about a little bit of emptiness, compassion, great qualities of Buddha and Bodhisattvas. So now we have to dedicate until I get the full enlightenment. How the great Bodhisattvas, Buddhas had gone through this path. I am coming. That's like, I'm coming too. You wait. I'm coming very soon. So this kind of a, we need kind of a, uh, fixed deposit <laughs> so that you won't use this for other reasons. So use this for a good purpose. And then also, also with this merit, may we receive a wonderful teaching like this, what we got this morning from His Holiness. May we again and again get an opportunity from His Holiness. For that reason, may His Holiness Dalai Lama live long. And then Lama Sabarambache's recognition comes, and then he can continue his students and give teachings. Okay? Do we have a deal? <laughs> I just thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh,
Finish? Did he catch it? Huh? Mm -hmm. Mine and Jewel. That juice. Okay. Happy Sakadabra. Thank you. Please, please, please. <laughs> May we enjoy many, many, many more of these wonderful, Thank you. wonderful teachings. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So Thank kind you. to us. Thank you. Now. So <laughs> when she passed into Paris. Oh, okay. We are so happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, sure, sure. So now check with me uh, 52. From tomorrow, we will have more time, okay? Thank you very much, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 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 <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Keshela, Keshela, could you please come in the group picture? Please, please. Also, uh, the Sangha, Venerable Brother. Please, please, Jaudi Jaudi. Wangdula, Jaudi Jaudi. What is Jaudi? Keshela. We, we, we thought it's easier here, Rambishi? Outside of there. Rambishi wants to go outside? Thank you. 